This isn't what it looks like, I swear. This is not a bestiality convention. This is a tutorial focused on Dendro, the Grasshopper plugin. And what I'm going to be showing you today is how to morph between two objects. Here, on the pink side, I have Venom from a acclaimed uh, Marvel movie, I believe it is. I don't actually know. I downloaded this off um, Turbo Squid for free. And then, okay, on the other side, we have a cartoon dog. And what I'll be showing you here today is the ability to morph in between these two objects using what's called VDB, um, and specifically a Grasshopper plugin called Dendro. Okay, so let's fire up Grasshopper. <clears throat> so Dendro, you can download on uh, Food for Rhino. It's really easy. I'm going to do a whole another video kind of going through the different components, but I just wanted to separate this one just to show the, the morphing between these two completely different mesh topologies that I downloaded. Um, in fact, one of them is open, not even closed mesh. And the, I've done this before, and this, this dog is going to cause problems, but I'll show you quickly how you can uh, solve these problems and get that final result of, of them morphing. So let's, no, with no further... Uh, Dilly dallying. Let's uh, upload these geometries. So I'm going to import Venom as uh, geometry one, and let's see what what it is. So it's going to come in as an invalid mesh, and let's see, which is going to cause problems. So let's see if we can just rebuild this mesh quickly. Um, I don't know I'm going to need some boolean toggles. So here we can rebuild the normals, we can cull the unused, and I'm just going to bring some of these to true. So rebuild normals, yeah, let's try that. Unify normals, yeah, let's try that one out. Actually, let's not do that one. This one is flip normal, so let's try that. And then merge duplicate meshes, yes, that's important. And now what we're getting out of this is a successful mesh. So now we have one mesh, I believe it's closed. But I don't think it really matters at this point because we're using volumes. Anyway, so let's so now let's go to Gen Dendro and um, let's let's quickly find the settings what we need. So we need it. The way VDB works in Dendro is using this Open VDB uh, plugin. Is you need to convert everything to a volume, and then at the end you're going to bring it back to a mesh. It's essentially converting to. It's essentially in, in, in space taking a cloud of voxels and either defining if they're within that mesh geometry or outside. And if they're within, they define the, the, the mass. And if they're outside, they're zero and they just uh, disappear. That's a very efficient way of computing um, very uh, complex um, shapes like liquids and, and clouds and whatnot. So actually, wait, so let's, let's put this, let's keep this clean. So we need, just need this into a mesh container. And now we need to use this, that mesh to volume that I just uh, deleted. So we're gonna do mesh to volume. And what you're gonna notice here is it's gonna tell you is S has failed to collect data. S being the settings. So we need to go here and bring in this create settings. And this is going to be critical. This is going to be critical when making these because this will define this S right here is the size of the voxels, which you have to control. Um, it can easily, make your computer explode, take off whatever happens to your laptop or desktop whenever you do too much um, processing. So be careful with that. Um, bandwidth this is something we don't really have to look at. Uh, well, yeah, actually a little bit, but not so much. And these other ones, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about so much today. Um, anyways, let's first just bring in um, our settings. So right now it's set at one, but I'm just gonna dial that back because I don't want my computer to explode while we're while I'm streaming because that always causes uh, a bit more problems. So over here, we're as you can see, we're, we've created now a volume, which I mean, you don't have to, but you can store it in this Dendro volume container just to see if it's compatible. It's a nice way of just checking, um, knowing that you can always take this mesh to volume and you can plug out this into another one and you can insert an uh, excerpt. <laughs> You can you can plug things into your uh, script much easier if you use these containers. In other words, um, so so this one is going to work. Um, now I just need to bring in the other geometry. This dog is the other one. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the volume blend component. 
Um, but what it's going to ask for is these two volumes, and then there's going to be a, a t parameter, which is just going to be a number between zero and one that defines if it's that that voxel geometry is going to be representing the first volume at zero or the second volume at one. And so 0.5 ideally is like the middle geometry. Um, and of course, those are relative and they don't always work as well, but we'll, we'll see. Anyways, okay, let's let's bring in the second geometry. Um, so we already brought in Venom, and actually let me hide Venom. Actually, now I can hide both of them. Um, so what in this guy is going giving also giving me uh, an invalid mesh, and I already know this because I did this once before, is that the, the eyeballs are completely separate meshes. So what I discovered that um, the way I can, can fix this um, is exploding these into now three invalid meshes, and then I can run um, this same repair mesh. So plug that in. Let's see if that fixes it. Nope, that still hasn't fixed it, but we're probably closer. Um, I, I know this seems a little bit redundant, and I and it, <laughs> to be honest, fixing meshes in Grasshopper is not the, not the best thing. You just kind of it's all trial and error. Um, you, I mean, you could go back and really like look at it, but I know sort of what the problem is, is that it's three meshes that are just completely invalid. So I'm just going to have to run a series of processes. And what I've kind of found is that one that does work is this mesh direction um, component. It, and it takes a second to load because it, it's sorting out the faces of the mesh into an organized, um, into an, or, an order. And let's see. And this still hasn't done it, but then I think we can use this clean and combine. And all of a sudden we have a mesh. <clears throat> we have one solid mesh. So as you can see, that's like a little bit of a process and not this nicest, uh, not the nicest process. But once you've dealt with meshes, you can start to use some of these tools, like these components here, to um, to, to fix those meshes and it's all it's all gonna be trial and error anyway so now we need to so now that we have a, another mesh i'm gonna highlight these guys and give them a little something so that this is the import mesh here i know i'm gonna need to bring in another mesh to volume so i can just control c control b and i can use the same settings in fact i'm going to want to use the same settings so just create one setting with one voxel size control so now I have these two mesh uh, volumes. So I can just line those guys up. Let's line these guys up and keep it a little bit cute. And now I have this volume blend. So I'm going to blend. I'm going to plug in this volume here and this volume here. And you can see we're actually already getting something. But first, let's um, let's let's plug in this T component. The one other thing we will worry about is this E, which is end time which is, I guess, the amount of time that it allows this volume to try to adjust in between. And it's kind of confusing, and honestly, you're just gonna have to play with this E parameter, the end time, and the voxel size, and kind of balance between, because that's all based on what size geometries you bring in, where they're located. It's, it's kind of a disaster, but just give it 15, 10, minute, 10 to 15 minutes of play, and you'll be able to figure it out. Um, so anyways, we're getting now an output. I'm gonna hide all of this. And you can see that does not look good um, in here. So what what is coming out? Uh, volume, sorry, mine blanks for half a second. So we're so we're getting out another uh, volume, and this we can we can we can do some post processing like smoothing. Let's see let's see what's happening now. So we are getting sort of there. Um, it, I've what I found is the initial. Uh, volume that you put in always looks better um, than the than the second one because it's going from the initial trying to match the second one. So the second, so the second the B mesh the B volume that we're putting in here is never quite as nice. But but like let's let's see what it would look like if we just up uh, up the voxel size. Um, and you're going to notice immediately like mesh quality is much lower, but it does achieve more. So what I've always found out, and I don't really want to explode my computer, as I've said, but so what I've generally found is you want to lower the voxel size, so you get a higher resolution, 
And you'll notice that when I put this to zero, Venom is actually very high resolution right now. And then you want to go to the end. So let's just go to one. And this is not working out. And that is because right now we have the end time at 10. And I'm gonna double click, do a little quote. And so right now it's at 10. So if I plug in 10, it's not gonna do anything. Because it's just the same. Um, but I'm gonna, uh, now I'm gonna start playing with this and see how long it takes before it actually fills out this volume. So 20, not quite it. Let's just double it, go to 40. 40, almost it. Let's do, that took three. I'm doing 100. I'll be back. Magic. I mean, we could get a little bit more detailed, but I mean, that's about it. Now, if we go back to zero, we're gonna see Venom at high res. If we go back to one, once again, lag and it's done. Anyway, so now we have like a working process that, that does balance between the voxel size and the um, this end time and the uh, parameter in between interpolating between zero and one. But we do still at the end have a volume. So we just need to go in here and convert volume to mesh right here. And once again, grab those same settings you used before. And maybe you can go ahead and wire display hot hidden and make it look a little cleaner. And now you have a mesh that you can bake out. A mesh that you can bake out um, that shows your dog to Venom uh, needs, which everyone, let's go lower which everyone of course needs. And you can, you, can, uh, you can of course animate the slider, right click animate um, and do those controls um, and whatnot. And, and I'm gonna go through more um, filters to, to post process that, um, that animation, but that's all I wanted to show you today. I wanted to keep it nice and quick. And yeah, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what other videos I can make and peace.